Welcome to Next Gen Platform Week, everybody. We had launches of two, well, three, if you want to count the Series S, maybe a side platform. Uh, different systems launching this week in the video game sphere with the Xbox Series S and X arriving tomorrow. And then on Thursday, we have the PlayStation 5. Obviously, we know which one of these devices is the most anticipated, of course, would be the Series S. No, I'm just, I'm just, I literally couldn't tell you the straight face. It's PlayStation 5, of course. It has the best launch lineup. It has the most impressive UI changes. I know some people aren't really into those UI changes, you know, there's personal preferences and all that, but it is definitely a very feature-rich UI. The hint system, all that jazz, kind of taking a cue from what Nintendo did back on the Wii U, but just doing it better, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, the, the DualSense controller, everything about the PlayStation 5 kind of feels new, including the really bold look of a PlayStation 5. However, Despite this, there are some concerns at buying a PlayStation 5 at launch. Now, there's always concerns about buying any platform at launch, and I always tell people that even though I'm a tech enthusiast and I try to get my hands on this tech as soon as possible, I will be getting an Xbox Series X tomorrow as soon as I have the funds available, uh, which you know, I'm trying to raise a little bit through live streams, but we'll see what happens. I plan to get a PlayStation 5 ASAP. Uh, hopefully, I don't have to pay a scalper for it, but we'll see. Uh, I don't believe in supporting the scalping market. That being said, I want to talk about a key part of the PlayStation 5 that is actually a problem. And I'm not talking about the fact that it advertises 8K on the box, yet doesn't actually support 8K at launch. So that's kind of weird. So if you went out and bought one of those new LG OLED 8K sets, which are quite expensive, uh, you're not going to see any benefits from it. Uh, I'm not even here to talk about how it doesn't support an auto variable refresh rate mode, which is basically uh, where you could take your, your gaming experience and lower the latency uh, without having to manually go into your TV and turn on game mode. Most TVs do have a game mode, but uh, the Xbox Series X supports just automatically putting your TV on that game mode uh, when you're using the Series X playing games. So, Again, these are just some little minor gripes. You know, the 8K thing is probably extremely minor for some people because most of us won't own 8K sets, maybe within even the lifetime of these platforms or maybe ever for some of us. Uh, so I honestly don't know that that's as big of a mission. It kind of sucks about the VRR user experience. But the main issue I have with the PlayStation 5 is the storage now we know it's got like what 664 667 gigs of available storage at launch because the rest of it that 850 whatever gigs is taken up by the os that's okay it sucks you know we, we it's not good it doesn't sound as bad as the series s of course but it's not good uh you know there's like an extra 200 gigs on an xbox series x so again it doesn't sound good but there was a lot of praise given to Sony because they offered the ability to use any PCIe Gen 4 SSD uh, in their system. It's a, it's a standard uh, NVMe uh, M.2 drive that you could that you could just throw in there. Now it has to be PCIe 4.0, and some people were praising this because of pricing reasons. There's no reason to praise it because of pricing reasons. It's PCIe Gen 4, which is exactly what Xbox uses. And guess what? The pricing of those. Are right around the same price as the expandable storage for xbox so they're not gaining a pricing advantage but you do gain a user friendliness advantage where you can choose whatever brand you trust because a lot of people aren't fans of seagate their seagate has been known to have issues with their ssds over the years now i doubt there's going to be an issue specifically with the one terabyte one that xbox is using because they won't partner with them if they were not confident that it would be a part that's going to last but it is what it is uh xbox said there's going to be more partners later so there'll be other options later uh and sony supposedly has those options out the gate or so we thought so two big things are working against the playstation 5 at launch it doesn't support the internal ssd expansion slots at launch so even though the slot is there and you can go ahead and plug an ssd an m an mvid an mvme m.2 pcie 4.0 what a mouthful uh drive into it the system will not recognize it and you cannot use it so you cannot expand the storage internally on playstation 5 at launch it is coming in an update later uh they just said later, not even later this year, later. So I'm guessing that it won't be available till sometime in 2021. This to me 
obviously is a sign that the platform is rushed and not ready because this is something you included, but you're not supporting. And having expansions of storage at launch is a pretty big deal on a platform that could get filled up with three games. Yes, three games can fill up the PlayStation 5 internal storage. If you get Miles Morales, you get Demon Souls, and then you happen to buy Call of Duty, you're done. Your storage is gone. You have no room for any more games. And that's assuming you can even get all three of those games installed with the updates. So, yeah, um, that's a problem. And you can't expand the storage at launch or probably the rest of 2020. You're going to find a lot of people running into storage issues literally this week. That is going to be, ooh, that's not good. Now, you could say, well, at least they announced that they they will be that they support expandable storage on the outside. So this is where you can plug in through one of their USB ports a external hard drive, and you can at least store the games on there just like you can with the Xbox Series X. Because for those who don't know, Microsoft touted that hey, look, we understand this this external uh, memory card is expensive, but you can plug in any you know any whatever you want uh, USB capable. Um, expansion drive on the outside whether it's ssd or not ssd and you can store all your next gen games on there and there's just a simple transfer feature where you transfer games back and forth from the hard from the external hard drive to the internal hard drive it's really quick it's nothing like having to re-download games um, and obviously eating up your bandwidth it's it's a very simple process microsoft has set up for it to allow you to cheaply expand your storage and you know you just kind of live with the fact that you have to do a little transferring in between um, with, with, with games, you know, that, yeah, I don't know. You're basically going to keep what, whatever you're currently playing on the internal storage and swap it out for games that you have on the external storage. Not that big a deal. Plus, you could play all Xbox One games um, directly uh, off of that drive as well. You don't have to transfer them to the internal storage, although you'll get an advantage of doing so with the SSD. So it's kind of a give or take, but there's options. Microsoft gives you options. PlayStation 5 at launch does not support external hard drives. Now, they said that they're going to support external hard drives. They're going to support you storing games on external hard drives. But it's not there at launch. So you can't use external hard drives to store PlayStation 5 games. Basically, that 664, 67 you know, gigs you get at launch, that's it. You cannot install PlayStation 5 games beyond that storage. You have to delete games to install new ones, which means having to re-download games. And remember, I said as many as three games could fill up that internal storage. Raise your hand right now in person. I'm out there. Raise your hand right now if you play more than three games in a given month. And I'm, you know, it could be anything. You could hop around in Fortnite. You know, may, you know maybe uh, on a Switch, you, know, you, might, you might hop between Fortnite or, or Mario Kart. Maybe pop in some Zelda quick. Play a little Luigi's Mansion. You know, heck, maybe you're you're uh, getting ready for Age of Calamity, playing that demo. Like I know personally, I hop around games all the time. It, in any given month, there's probably a half dozen to a dozen games that I hop between. Some for quick multiplayer action. Some are longer sessions that I'm working on, like a Fire Emblem Three Houses. But in general, I'm not just playing one game per month. I know for some of you, that's it. You only play a single game per month or for many months. You know, you just play Fortnite. You just play Call of Duty. You just play Madden. And that's fine. But for a lot of people, we like to play a wide variety of games that kind of suit whatever mood we're in or the time available. Like when I say play Assassin's Creed Valhalla this year, it's going to be for longer play sessions. I'm not just going to sit down and play it for, you know, a quick 10 minutes. It's not that kind of game. That's something where you can hop into a multiplayer match in something for 10 minutes if that's all the time I have. Plus, I might not always be in the mood to play a single-player experience like that. So there's a, a lot of factors that come into play that make it so this is pretty much unacceptable at launch. But again, something that we already know heading into launch is a problem. In fact, we already had one person on Twitter when I brought this up mentioned, man, I should have kept my, my Series X pre-order because I could have played Next Gen earlier and I wouldn't have had to worry about storage as much. And they switched because, you know, of the Seagate one terabyte expensive drive, not realizing that all NVMe drives on the PlayStation 5 are going to be expensive too, and you can't even use them at launch. We didn't even know that until the console reviews came out and said, hey, um, if you're hoping to expand your storage for PlayStation 5 games, you're shit out of luck. So, sorry. Yeah, this is not okay. Um, and I do think both platforms, I want to be fair in my criticism, both platforms I don't think are ready to go. Uh, now, I will note that I think the Xbox Series X slash S 
is ready from a hardware perspective. It is completely feature rich. It has 8K support. It supports the uh, the, the variable refresh rate uh, and, and turning your TV into the game mode. It supports uh, the external hard drives and has expandable storage at launch. Uh, there are zero missing touted features of the Series S and Series X at launch. The console you get, the UI you get, the software you get, everything is feature complete. However, without Halo Infinite, there is zero big deal exclusive games at launch. There is a one timed exclusive. Sakura is there, which is a timed exclusive. Is it Sakura? I don't know. Not, not Sakura. I, I forget. There's one Japanese game. I can't remember its name of it. That actually is exclusive. Maybe it's Yakuza. I don't know. That. I get confused sometimes, but yeah, there's one Japanese exclusive game that doesn't really look next gen, but it is exclusive for, you know, like six months or something. But yeah, I, I honestly think that, uh, th that without some better software, at least something, you know, at least at launch Xbox one, we have like, you know, rise son of Rome and a couple others. Uh, it, it, there was at least something to showcase the platform this time around. It's yeah, they're pushing Assassin's Creed Valhalla hard because you can play it first next gen tomorrow, whereas you have to wait till Thursday for uh, for PlayStation Five. But PlayStation Five is missing key features. Has games, doesn't have all the features in place, and the primary one being the storage issue because storage issue will be an issue day one. I guarantee you, there's going to be someone who picks up a PlayStation Five day one and has storage issues literally within hours because they're going to transfer some of their PlayStation 4 games to the internal SSD. Now, why are they doing that? Because they want that 60 FPS. They want those faster load times. They want those next-gen upgrades because a, a lot of the games are getting these next-gen patches. They want to play them, and you're going to have to do that on the internal SSD. You won't be able to play those next-gen stuff on the external. The external um, hard drive assuming you can even plug it in and play the old library off of it day one, uh, will not be able to have these upgrades. You'll just be playing stock standard PlayStation 4. It won't feel any different on the Series or on the Series X on the PlayStation 5. So this is a problem. It's a problem that needs to be addressed. It's a problem that will be addressed someday in the future. Uh, if you ever wonder why Sony's been very coy about their platform, not giving reviewers as much time with it, not really deep diving as much into it as, as people wish they would, this is part of the reason why. The system is not technically ready to go. It will be feature complete eventually. It will allow you to have all the storage you want eventually. But at launch, mm, mm, it's, it's, it's not looking good. Now, yes, Xbox needs to catch up with games. But at least the platform is feature complete. Now, if you ask me, what, what do I care about most? Do I care about the games or care about a feature complete platform? The obvious choice is the games. And that's why PlayStation 5 still looks like a great buy if you really, really have to have that remake of Demon's Souls. Like, if you must have that remake now, PlayStation 5 is going to feel like a must buy. But for a platform that's offering an all digital version that <laughs> you can't even put discs in, not that discs even matter anymore since you have to install the game. Um, in terms of the storage capacity. It matters in terms of physical collecting and resale value. I get that. But in terms of actual storage, it doesn't matter. You install the game anyways. I, I, I'm just, I don't think this is okay. I think this is a big oof. And I, I have to call it out. I, I hate it. Like, I don't want to talk positively. And once I have the PlayStation 5 in my hands, I'm sure I'll have a lot of positive things to say. And maybe by then they even support the more storage options. But for right now, I'm almost kind of glad that there was a big snafu with PlayStation 5 pre-orders hitting in that early, making me unable to get one. Because that because that happened, I no longer have to concern myself with some of these issues right away. I can just focus on the X and the Switch this holiday and hopefully get a PlayStation 5 soon after. And then I can, you know, hopefully have some of those issues patched out by then. We'll see. So I think if you buy a PlayStation 5, you will be satisfied with the performance, you'll be satisfied with the games, uh, but you will be quickly dissatisfied with the fact you can only have like three on your system at once. All right, folks, I am Nintendo Robojance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.